What's up everybody, Nate here. So I think it's pretty safe to say that 2022 has not been the stock market's year. After coming off of a pretty solid 2020 and rising from the depths of the 2020 crash, and then having an even better 2021, the stock market has done nothing but tank this year. And I mean, it's not tanking on its own. There has been a lot of things that are happening all across the world and in our own country that are sinking markets right now. From inflation hitting a new over 40 year high back in February 2022 to the geopolitical risks posed by Russia and Ukraine, traders have had a lot to worry about when it comes to the stock market. But even though all of this turmoil has been going on for a long time, investors are still pouring money into the stock market. In fact, assets that are under management have gone from around $5 trillion back at the end of 2019 all the way up to nearly $7 trillion by mid-2022. Now, putting money into the stock market isn't the issue. The bigger issue is what is going to happen with the stock market next and investors are worried about a variety of things. Today, we're going to be talking about what is coming for the stock market in 2022 and why that $7 trillion and the rest of the money on the New York Stock Exchange could be in danger this year. But before I get into all of that, do me a quick favor and hit smash or destroy that thumbs up button below and don't ring that notification bell too. Both of those two things are completely free and they help to show me that you like this video and that you wanna see even more just like it. Thank you so much for doing that. And now let's talk all about the stock market and the dangers that might be coming in 2022. All right, so a super quick backstory for you here. The stock market crashed in March of 2020 because of the pandemic. Now the federal government and the Federal Reserve ended up bailing out the stock market by providing trillions of dollars in stimulus. The Federal Reserve during this time racked up a balance sheet of over $9 trillion. And now they're starting to reduce their balance sheet in 2022. But this means they were buying bonds on Wall Street. So they were providing hundreds of billions of dollars worth of liquidity to companies and investors every single month. And of course, we had supply chain issues in the United States, which meant that companies now had to produce more goods in order to meet demand. That came at a cost though, so prices went up across the board for every single business. Not to mention the stimulus that went to Americans. A lot of those Americans ended up putting that money in the stock market because a lot of them knew the value of the dollar was going to go down. And the only way to really be inflation is to invest your money. So asset prices across the country and across the world ended up skyrocketing. The Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ all set new record highs after coming off of a crash in 2020. Now the stock market is filled with more than just $7 trillion in assets. Some estimates put the entire market cap of the stock market near double that, so around $14 trillion. Now it's important to note here that is just the value of all of the assets. That's not how much money is actually circulating throughout the stock market. But regardless, this $7 trillion is from managed funds. So we're talking about index funds and ETFs. Companies manage these funds and investors like them because they are passive investments that you can set up auto payments for every single month. ETFs and index funds are considered a much safer way to invest because you're not just investing in an individual company. You're investing in a group of companies. So if one company doesn't perform well or if it gets kicked out of the ETF or index fund in general, General, then your total investment is still going to be pretty valuable because sometimes you're investing in 30, 40, 50, and even 100 different companies and not just one. If you invest in just one company and that one company goes under, then you lose your entire investment. Millions of new investors have entered the market over the last two years because of all of the stimulus and because the stock market was at such a low point, they could buy in and get shares in these ETFs or index funds or even individual companies at a discount. And by the end of 2020 and the end of 2021, that was a pretty great deal for a lot of investors. There wasn't a ton of market volatility, but in 2022, that is all changing. You see, investors right now are worried. They're worried about inflation. They're worried about geopolitical risks. They're worried about an impending recession, and they're worried about dividend sustainability from their investments. All of the people who manage these funds are now trying to explain to all of these brand new investors what is happening on the market. But the problem is it's really hard to explain. There is a lot of strange things happening in our economy right now. And while the economy doesn't directly influence or mimic the stock market, investors are going to want to move their money around based on what goes on with the economy. I mentioned this before, but inflation hit a new over 40 year high of 7.9% back in February, 2022. And the White House just released that they expect the next inflation or CP 
CPI report for March 2022 to be even worse. In their words, extraordinarily elevated. So inflation is most likely going to continue to go up in the United States, and many investors are worried about that. According to a poll by CNBC, around 43% of all investors are worried about inflation rising too quickly in the United States. And that's bad for everyone because the value of your money is now going to go down, which means you now need more money to buy all the same things. What's worse is businesses have to raise their prices because demand is so high because of our supply chain issues that now they have to stock the shelves and supply more to meet all of our demand. Overall, there's just going to be more money circulating throughout our economy, which means that every dollar you spend is going to be less valuable. That could hurt businesses if everyday regular Americans can no longer afford as many products. And also, if businesses cannot keep up with the demand, if they can't supply anything and Americans have money, well now we enter a period called stagflation. Economic growth starts to shrink in your country while inflation goes way up. Now when it comes to inflation, what exactly can we do? Well, the Federal Reserve has already started raising its interest rates in order to lower demand in the United States. Back in March 2022, the Federal Reserve said they were going to immediately raise their benchmark interest rates by around 0.25% or 25 basis points. That means it's going to be a lot harder for Americans to get a mortgage or an auto loan because interest rates are going up. That puts immediate pressure on banks who need to borrow this money and then loan it out to you. So that'll kind of curve a lot of the demand in the housing market and in the auto market. So there won't be as much money going around in the economy. Now the other thing the Federal Reserve wants to do is take all of its stimulus and run off its balance sheet from the stock market. That means it will no longer be buying hundreds of billions of dollars every single month in corporate bonds or treasury bonds or mortgage-backed securities. So again, all of that money that was going to banks and corporations on the stock market is now disappearing. And banks will also have less money to loan out to everyday people. So interest rates are going to go up from that too. But that's really all the Federal Reserve can do as far as monetary policy goes. They can't really control what goes on outside the United States borders with all of the geopolitical issues and massive supply chain issues that we faced over the last two years. And if the Federal Reserve does way too much, it makes it impossible for anyone to borrow money and impossible for anybody to spend money. Well, then that could ultimately cause a recession, which is what a lot of investors are worried about, a prolonged economic slowdown. This basically means that businesses aren't able to grow as much, and if they can't grow, then they're going to have to start laying off employees or firing people, which leads to the unemployment rate going up in the United States. Not only that, but consumers who can keep their job aren't able to buy as much because the shelves are empty, and even when they are full, the prices are just way too high. So Americans aren't spending as much money, which which means they're saving their money or they are investing it, but for the most part, they're just holding on to it or spending everything that they have, which is still not enough for these businesses to grow. So of course your GDP shrinks, which leads to a recession. Now a recession is just two consecutive quarters where you have decreased GDP. And of course there are the geopolitical risks that are coming out of Ukraine and Russia right now. Now Russia invaded Ukraine back in mid-February, 2022. That has caused a massive disruption to our supply chain chains all throughout the world. And not only that, but a lot of the resources that the United States gets from Russia now cost a lot more here in our own country. Russia is a massive supplier of oil and natural gas and some precious metals and wheat. The United States announced just a few weeks after Russia invaded Ukraine that they would no longer accept any Russian oil or oil-based products. They're starting to work on a lot of the other major resources that we get from Russia, which is going to take a while. But in the meantime, Russia is upcharging for all of those things or just limiting the supply to other nations. So we're talking the United States and EU countries. That has made energy costs and the cost of everything else associated with wheat and natural gas and some metals in the United States to go way up. Pinching Americans' budgets even more and causing inflation to rise. Now the big concern here for many investors is if this conflict gets even worse and the United States is somehow further dragged into it, well that's going to cause some serious economic issues. We are already allocating billions of dollars every single month to Ukraine and humanitarian efforts in the country. If it's prolonged or the United States has to enter an actual conflict, well, that could mean that markets as we know them are completely 
shifted. Wars are nothing but costly, and we're talking about human lives and money here. No matter what the conflict is, both countries will pay for it in one way or another. That could mean even more resources go overseas, inflation gets even higher, and businesses are restricted even more. That hurts everybody in our economy. Not only that, but the United States is the largest GDP producer in the world, so that hurts other countries too. Finally, I want to mention the dividend sustainability here. So a lot of investors right now that have been putting trillions of dollars into the market over the last few years are now worried about the returns that they're going to get back. One of the ways that investors make money on the New York Stock Exchange is through dividends. Dividends are essentially extra money that these companies have that they return to investors just for investing in them. The key word here though is extra. If companies have some extra profits, then they give that money back to investors. But if our economy starts to shrink and people are buying a lot less and companies don't really have a lot of excess profits, then that money is not going to go back to investors. Dividends could be suspended and we saw this back in 2020 because the exact same thing happened. Companies were losing money hand over fist, so they couldn't exactly give any extra money to their investors. Now that was a lot, but what exactly does this all mean? Well, my point of this video is to say that Americans, whether they're expert investors or brand new investors, have been pumping trillions of dollars into the market over the last two years. That money is in danger in 2022 for all of the things I just listed. That means that all of these investors are now in full panic mode. They're starting to move their money around, which is creating a lot of market volatility. So even the investors that aren't freaking out are starting to lose money. And the bigger issue here is that one way to escape a lot of that volatility is to invest in ETFs or index funds, but even those funds are starting to lose money and becoming very volatile because the market in general is crazy. Nobody really knows what's going to happen next, and there is a lot of fear in the stock market right now. The fear is that things are going to get a lot worse. The country could enter a recession, and the United States may get even further involved in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Not only that, but inflation is not going away, and that is a scary thing for everyday Americans and businesses. And then even the investments that you do have, you're probably not going to see any dividends because companies may end up suspending them if they have no additional profits and we enter a recession. Now, ultimately, there's not really much that individual investors can do about this. Of course, you can start diversifying your portfolio as much as you possibly can. If you just invest in one single thing and that that thing goes under, well, then you lose your entire investment. So do your research and do your own due diligence in cryptocurrency and commodities and real estate and of course the stock market. Something is going to continue to go up or at least level out and make you money over inflation. Nobody really knows what that thing is going to be because all of the things I just listed are heavily volatile. And it's important to mention here that there is a lot of fear and panic in the stock market right now, which you got to understand the stock market is all about making profits and it's all about making money. The second that companies on the New York Stock Exchange have any sort of danger of not making money, then investors want to move their money around. They want to put their money into things that are going to make them money. That is pretty much the whole purpose of investing. So investors get very emotional. They get scared and they have fear. That can cause markets to go way up and it can also cause severe market crashes. Now, I'm not sure that we're going to see a market crash in 2022, but the stock market is going to be heavily volatile for a very long time, and all of those trillions of dollars are currently being threatened by outside forces and inflation. It's worth noting too here that over the stock market's entire history, no matter how many times it has corrected or gone into a complete crash, it has always come back out on top. The stock market, every single time it has crashed, has gone back up and hit new record highs and there is a lot of different reasons for that. Fundamentally, there's nothing really wrong with the companies or the stock market itself. It's all our economy and the way that investors perceive the future. Because that's what you're doing when you invest in the stock market. You are essentially betting on the United States economic future. I'm a firm believer that the United States economy is going to continue to grow even if it does shrink for a few quarters in 2022 and beyond. Everything has been so elevated artificially because of the Federal Reserve and the federal government and investors pouring trillions of additional dollars into the market over the past
last couple of years. So in order to get back to a healthy economy and a healthy market, we need to kind of have a correction or some type of crash. And I don't mean to scare you with that, but eventually the positive thing is that the market will most likely go back up because investors will see that the market is at a low, but there's nothing really fundamentally wrong with it. That means you can invest and buy a lot of companies at a discount, and then eventually their stock price will go right back up. Of course, at least in theory. I mean, I can't for sure tell you if the stock market is going to go back up and when exactly that is going to happen. All I can tell you right now is that there is a lot of money in the market and that money is in danger. But all I can tell you is this, if you do your due diligence and know all of your goals ahead of time, then getting into the stock market or the cryptocurrency market or real estate won't be as scary, especially when you understand how all of those markets work and are priced. It's scary to invest sometimes because you're never guaranteed that you're going to make money. But the alternative is not investing and losing all of your money's value to things like inflation. I mean, I wish I could tell you that there was an alternative, but there's really no other way. You have to invest if you want to build wealth. And while things are scary right now, I have that peace of mind for my investments that I'm not going to touch any of them because there's no point to. Eventually, whether the market crashes or goes into a correction territory, I know that eventually it's most likely going to go right back up, which means I don't need to touch my investments because I'm investing for the long term. Now that might not be the case for you. So again, you're going to have to assess your long term and short term goals here. And in the end, you'll take pretty much all of the worry out of investing, no matter what the market is. And trust me when I say this, it is still a great thing to keep an eye on everything that's going on. But now I want to hear from you on this issue. What do you think about the stock market essentially tanking in 2022? Do you think that all all of these trillions of dollars from new investors and expert investors alike are in danger this year? Or do you think that no matter what, the stock market is going to improve and it doesn't really matter what happens next if you got a long-term mindset? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all of the top business and financial news from around the country, our team puts together a free daily newsletter and you can subscribe to it by clicking the link in this corner right here. And if you want to stay up to date with me and everything else happening in the business and financial world, I'm putting out updates seven days a week over here on this channel. And I've actually got another one ready for you right here. So be sure to check that out before you go. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there and I'll see you all in the next one.